Hey guys, I want to do a quick touch base here on our desktop configuration. So what we have here is we have our group policy configuration pulled up and this is all the policies currently configured for our computers and our users. You'll notice that right now I'm running the non-compliant versions of the Windows 10 computer just because we're still in the process of our configuration. Um, but what I wanted to do is show you what the desktop looks like. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so on the desktop side, uh, here we are. We're about to log in for the first time. Um, we'll see that we get our uh, control, you know, indicating that we're logging into a secure infrastructure. You could change this to whatever you want. Um, I just left it the default from the CIS benchmark for the sake of this. Uh, but at any rate, so we'll click OK. And we'll go to log into our fake Liz account. Okay, so we're logged in now to our fake Liz account. And you'll notice that the startup is no different than if you were on just a regular Windows machine. Um, you shouldn't really notice anything different from a, uh, a functional standpoint, at least on a blank slate that we have here. Um, if there was stuff already built and applications on this, this was already a user, then you may have some issues that you gotta work through, that does happen. But for the sake of this machine, this is a blank machine, there's nothing on here. So I'm gonna click on start, we'll notice that we have our configuration set and it, we don't have anything set right now to change our start menu, but you know we do have our permission set. Um, we're going to go into File Explorer, into the, this PC, and we can see that we have our network drives. So we we let we added our, our our fake Liz account to the uh, permissions to access our network shares we set up in our previous video. Um, we didn't give her access into the accounting department, and I did that on purpose so you could see that if you use a single policy to apply, um, you could just define who has access to what through a security group. And if you don't give the person access to all the security groups, you just get a blank. Um, directory and basically it'll tell you, you don't have permissions to access now when I double clicked on that what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a audit report on the file server so if I logged into the file server now and I went into the uh, event viewer we could actually see that I attempted to access that account um, that could be helpful for like administrators so administrators could reach out and find out if there's a reason a user wanted to try to access it um, at any rate so we'll, let's uh, jump now and go into the control panel so we'll just do run and do control and I will do uh, view devices and printers. And here we go, we have our fake company printer. Now I didn't give us access to the uh, um, to the accounting printer, just the fake company printer, and it's it's right there. So our policy's working to deploy our printers. Uh, now if you guys ever needed access to the actual files server to actually just manually install the printers, you could still do that. Just so you know, the configurations we set up will allow it to automatically apply to the machines. But if you have a one-off situation where you just need a single user to have access, as long as that user is part of the security group, um, you could just whack whack to the server to access it. So, for instance, if we went to like our file server, just um, ytd file one, we could see the printers. And if this printer didn't show up for whatever reason, or if you wanted to just add it temporarily, but you added everything to the security group, you just right-click on it and hit connect and it'll automatically map it because again the security configuration is what controls the the ability for the user to install the drivers not the policy the policy just deploys it so that way it links it automatically to the system so you don't have to manually do it but if you have a one-off that you just want to add that one printer you could totally do it that way you still get all the audit reports and everything else as long as you're part of those security groups um, so outside of that stuff is there anything else in here that we could test well we could take a look here and see if we could do run as administrator you'll see this app has been blocked from your sister to run as an administrator so basically what happens is we have uac controls configured that you have to use a delegated access control account so that means um you know you have to be a desktop admin right now i'm not a desktop admin i'm just a user i logged into the system you could change this if you wanted to you could go through the uac controllers and add the ability to um you know uh, to launch as a secondary screen or a secure location to allow an administrator putting credentials to run an application. But in a compliance world, that's not allowed. So if you're running NIST, you can't have that. This is the way it's supposed to be. If you're not running NIST and you're just trying to do this because you just wanna uh, work with the desktop and have the thing actually prompt on the screen, you could do that too. You just gotta modify the uh, actual um, configuration on the, um, the policy itself. So at any rate, so we just take close. That's that's an additional portion of the policy configuration. 
Um, but yeah, so as we can see, everything's working fine. So we're in good shape. Uh, we'll continue on with the next series of videos to go through the, the uh, fine tuning of the policy configuration. And I'll show you how to change the UIC controllers if you want that prompt. And uh, we'll continue to work through these uh, configurations. Maybe we'll dip into some DFS for uh, file replication services on uh, two different file servers. And uh, um, maybe some, uh, some stuff for licensing. And we can also look at uh, certificate services as well, IIS and MSSQL. So um, I will continue on this process and continue making these things. As long as you guys keep can, uh, subscribing and watching the videos, I'll keep making them. All right, guys, thanks so much for your time, and I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day.